Joining us now from Clue, Texas, Republican Congressman and former presidential candidate Ron, Ca Ron Paul. Thanks for joining us this morning, Congressman. Great to see you. Thank you. Last time you were with us, you explained why you were against the government's bailout plan, why you were voting against it, and you didn't believe that focusing on uh, uh, buying these troubled assets was the smart thing to do. Now, since then, uh, they've sort of tweaked it, if you will, and now have decided to buy stakes in some U.S. banks. Do you think that's a better strategy to help heal the economy? <laughs> Now, they tweaked it up. You know, it started off as a three-page document, ended up 450 pages. Instead of $700 billion, it's up to $850 billion. Reuters had a story out this morning today. They estimated it's going to cost the American taxpayer about $5 trillion. So, no, it's tweaking in the wrong direction, and I don't think it's going to do any good whatsoever. Well, the credit markets are starting to loosen up a bit, at least from what we've seen uh, this week. Is that a sign that maybe it is working? Well, maybe to some degree on the short run, but that just means that uh, uh, we'll have more inflation. You can't create $5 trillion out of thin air and not expect inflation. So although the dollar may be up a little bit right now because the markets are a little calmer, this just means that in time we're going to all suffer and pay for this, and we're going to pay for it with higher prices. And this is the serious problem. It's the attack on the dollar system. They're trying to, they're trying to save the dollar, but, but uh, this system that we've had since 1971 is non-viable and it's coming to an end. That's what this whole story is about, the end of a monetary system that we've had since 1971 and something has to give. You just can't create more money out of thin air and propping up everybody. It's an immoral system. You're asking the poor people to bail out the rich. You're asking the innocent people to bail out the guilty. You're asking people to just totally defy the Constitution because there's no place in the Constitution that says that we can do these things. And besides, economically it's a disaster this is going to cause a great deal of harm even it's, it's like a drug addict taking a, a strong fix and he feels better for a day or two but believe me we're going to kill the patient and the patient here is the dollar system and our whole entire world economy have you heard so anything i would say let's get off this addiction and, and congressman have you heard anything from either of the presidential candidates about their economic plans that you think are good things that need to be implemented uh, no, not really, but I, I, you know, it's tough to fi find out the good parts. I do think that John McCain has a better approach uh, to the medical problem, and, uh, and, and, and Obama has a better approach to trying to save uh, some money by coming home from Iraq. You know, we're spending $10 billion a, a, a month over there, so we could save a lot of money, and that money should be spent back here. But quite frankly, how can we trust anybody? Because, you know, when it comes to the bailout, how do they differ? Both McCain and right. Obama comes rushing back to Washington and vote for the bailout. Well, they both, and, they know, both approved it and it approved both houses. I know you, you uh, voted against it, but that leads me to another question. If Barack Obama does end up winning, it looks like the Democrats would really have a trifecta in Congress, both houses and the White House. What does that mean for the American uh, people and also for the GOP? Oh, I mean, it's a disaster for the country and everybody because he, even with all the shortcomings of John McCain, his strongest argument to be president is keep the Congress and the presidency in separate hands. The American people are going to be a lot better off if they're fighting a little bit instead of just having no restraints whatsoever. Well, so, so, I mean, so, that's you know, a it's poor reason to argue for the case. <laughs> Uh, it's a poor I, argument for the, him, McCain, but go I, ahead. I know what you're saying. Staff members actually writing on your own website say that the Democratic takeover of, of both houses of Congress and the White House this November would be a, quote, repudiation of false conservatism of the Republican Party. Um, how do you get back to some of those fiscally conservative ideals? Well, it's going to be tough because you have to convince the American people that that's what we need. And everybody now is realizing in the country there's something seriously wrong with our whole financial system and our governmental system. But the big question is, do, does the majority of the American people believe the government can still take care of us? Or should we get the government out of the way, quit spending money, balance the budget, bring our troops home, and let the American people keep the money they earn? That means drastically reducing taxes, getting the government out of this over regulation and give up on this idea that inflation solves everybody's problem. If inflation, that is the creation of new money, could solve everybody's problem, which they're, they're claiming right now, nobody would ever have to work again. If $5 trillion could save this economy, why work? Just print money and everybody will be happy. <laughs> so they don't, under, they don't understand the idea that people have to work, people have to save. Instead of consumers spending more money, 
the market is saying you should back off, spend less money, and save money. But everybody said, oh, no, don't save money. You're supposed to go out there and, and spend money. Right. But the people who have saved in the last five years have money in the bank, and cash is good right now. Now they're going to buy up the bargains. They're going to get a good deal on a house. Prices of houses should come down. We shouldn't art keep them artificially high. We shouldn't try to stimulate housing. There are too many houses. We should let the market make these decisions. It's arrogant for the politicians and the bureaucrats to believe they can plan the economy and sort this all out. We've been doing it for all these years, and the monetary system is so confusing and so corrupt that the sooner we get back to believing in ourselves, believing in freedom, believing in sound money, believing in the Constitution, we're going to solve these problems. But right now, there's a fight going on in this country. Our numbers are growing. We're not the majority, but our numbers are growing. And as this situation deteriorates, more people are going to say, hey, maybe it's right. Maybe limited government and freedom works. Maybe freedom is popular and maybe freedom really works. And this idea that we have to depend on government for all these programs right. is an illusion. All right. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. But uh, as always, sometimes the voice in the wilderness. But, you know, you, you, you certainly bring up some good points this morning. Representative Ron Paul, always great to have you on the show. Thanks. Thank you.